Hey, welcome back. For episode three of my channel, I'll be making chains. Making a green chain today. The first thing to do is clean up the rods, remove any oil residue. Here's the little blue rod that I used for the last chain I made. I'm gonna go ahead and use this as a guide for all the other pieces I cut for this new green one. What I'm using are actually tile snips I picked up at the hardware store. I have a little glass scoring tool also, but it's a little harder to work with. And something with a rod like this is a lot easier with these tile snips. So I'm going to start off here by attaching one to a punty. I'll go ahead and warm up a section in the middle here and then slowly bend it down into that link shape. This is going to make just half a link for right now. And you can use a smaller flame like this. It just takes a little bit more time to work the bend around. And now I'm going to go in with this graphite rod and kind of ream out those inside edges and help finalize the shape. So this link being the first link, I'm going to make it a closed one. Just bending it around and then I'm going to melt those ends together. I'm going to go ahead and attach a second punty so I can finish the first side. Pulling off some excess glass to finish up the shape. So all the other links are going to be open links. And you'll see exactly what I mean here in a minute. I also wanted to say to the viewers, hope you guys have a good and uh, safe Easter coming up this weekend. Should be lots of fun. I'm actually planning for a pretty cool video. I don't know though, it's kind of different than what the normal format is, and I'm not sure if I have enough time. I still need to upload this video. I was actually delayed a bit on it. All right, so I'm going in here with the second link, and this one will be different from the first. A nice quick bend there. And these chain links as a full necklace do look pretty great when you wear it out. It's something I get the most compliments on, even though I wear the pendants more than I do the chain. I'm attaching a new punty to the bottom and getting rid of my last one. And a punty is a handle, temporary handle that a glass blower will use. Go ahead and lay both links together. The oops, as I do that, the last punty just popped off. But that's okay. I don't really need it anyway. Here's a cool part. I'm going to heat up both sides and bring them together. Be very careful not to let that hanging link fall back into the molten glass or else it's going to get stuck. Notice the new glass science sign in the background there. I made it out of twisted cane. That's actually another video coming up. It turned out really well. I was looking for something to put up there. I'm probably gonna put some additional stuff up there in the future. Now with these links complete, I'm gonna cut some more rods, turn up the flames, and get this glass a-flowing. So now I'm pushing about twice as much heat here. It helps to get more of the glass heated up for larger bends. A lot of the work's done with the tweezers, the way I do it. I do use a graphite rod to help finalize the shape. I just wanted to show these few clips here in real time without any cuts so you can kind of see how quick the process can be 
uh, despite sometimes it does take quite a long time to get things done. It just takes a little bit of extra time to push that heat into the glass. And now I think it's about 30 links, I believe, for a necklace. These chains can take quite a bit of time to make them into a full necklace. These links do have to go through an annealing process. You could do that before you make them into a chain, but I kind of prefer to just wait until the entire thing is made. Here is two chains. I've been working on two separately. I'm going to start putting together with these last two open links. Wish me luck! These last two links are going to be the hardest part of the process. As the chain gets a little bit heavier, each link and a little bit harder to hold. But where there's a will, there is a way. And one thing I forgot to mention was before I close that gap, I want to heat up both sides very, very hot to help keep air from getting trapped in between and getting encased inside of the glass. I don't want to reheat any of the previous links or allow them to fall forward into the molten glass and get stuck. This is pretty good for practice if you're starting out with lamp working the last month. And you could use clear glass to save on the colored glass, which can be a little bit of a, more expensive depending on where you get it. But I just like to buy American glass because it's really great quality. And they're all mostly smaller shops, so they can really use my business. So that's why I'd rather just buy from them and then from than from someone else. And if you are starting out, these smaller two-stage torches are pretty great. Uh, that extra stage there puts out a lot of heat when you need it to, which you might end up seeing tomorrow in a bonus Easter episode coming up. And yeah, it's going to be a different idea that I've had for a while here, but it should be pretty cool. Make sure to check that out on Easter. And that was the last link there completed on one side. I'm just going to do a little bit of final shaping and then flip it around to take off that rod. I'm going in with a small flame to pull off that rod and any extra glass remaining. And I'll finish up shaping that last link and the chain will be complete. And after that, it'll go in the kiln for about an hour to do the annealing process, which just relieves the stress that builds up in the glass over the course of the heating and reheating. And it's complete. I hope you liked that video. The chain turned out really well. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, share this video, and get ready for what's coming up next.